Okay, what we're going to do in this video is we're going to go over some um, basic uh, sine and cosine functions and a couple problems that deal with these. Now, the first uh, problem here we have is a, is a sine curve, okay? And the important thing to know about a sine curve here is it always, you know, it's going to start um, right here. Well, you know, if it, if it isn't shifted, it starts at zero. It goes up to 90 to 180 to 270 to 360. Now it's periodic, which means, you know, it repeats. It goes on and it keeps going on forever. Um, now, there's a couple terms that you need to know here. Um, let's see, let's get some color here. Um, for instance, okay, so this, you know, like this right here from the top to the, this middle part right here is called the principal axis. Principal axis okay now the the amount it goes up up and down is called the amplitude now you you can stretch amplitude and that should be a d whatever um it can uh stretch up like this could stretch up to two and down to negative two for instance um and then you know the amount of time it takes to you know for it to repeat is called uh the period so in this case um the period is 360 degrees now you can shift these whole whole things. Now the way you know a sine function is written would be like this: um, y equals uh, a sine b x plus c. Now a is the amplitude. Well, that's easy to remember. Uh, b is basically um, how many periods are in. Uh, 360 degrees is the way I always look at it. So, for instance, if this were two, there'd be two periods in 360 degrees, so the period would be up 180 degrees. So this this has to do with the period right here, and then this C is the vertical translation. So you know you can move these graphs up and down. Okay. Now. Uh, here we have a cosine function. Now the only difference with the cosine function is it, is it starts at the top um, uh, of the fun of you know of the function, as opposed to starting right here. It starts at the top. Okay, so basically what happens is is you you can shift a lot of these, um, and we'll we'll do a couple problems where you can kind of see how that works. So let's move down here. Well, look. If you look at this, you can see actually the cosine and sine functions on top of each other. Um, it's pretty cool. Like basically, all you can see is that they're just shifted 90 degrees. I mean, they're the same function aside from being shifted 90 degrees. And if we were to look at a unit circle, you could see that uh, in the studies curriculum. You don't really have to know the unit circle, so I'm not going to get into that. Um, but just know the cosine starts at the top. Um, sine function starts at, at in the middle of of the uh, periodic function. So let's look at uh, this, this problem right here. It says the temperature in degrees Celsius during uh, a 24-hour period is shown on the graph and is given by the function f of t is a cosine b t plus c, where a, b, and c are constants. t is the time in hours, and b t is measured in degrees. Uh, OK, uh, we can do that. No problem. Okay, so this is a very typical problem. You, you'll have to figure out what A, B, and C are. So we, we can do that. It's, it's pretty, pretty straightforward. Okay, so um, this is actually a really neat problem uh, in terms of, you know, it does all the things we were just talking about in terms of shifts and periods and all that stuff. So um, basically what I always like to do here is, you know, kind of look at the top of the function and look at the bottom like right here, okay? Um, now, it, we, it says it's cosine, so we know it's cosine and, and it starts up at the top, that's fine. Um, now, the maximum here is negative one and the minimum is negative five, okay? So if we wanna find out, um, you know, what the principal axis is, you know, we can just add those together. So like negative one plus negative five and just divide it by two. So we basically take the average. So it'd be negative six over uh, two, which is negative three. So basically what you're looking at here is the principal axis is at negative three. It's really important that you get the principal axis. Um, once you get that, everything else is pretty easy. Okay, so the first thing they ask us is, you know, they want A. 
here. Well, um, okay, no problem. That's the amplitude. How much does it go up or down from the principal axis? Okay, well, one, two, one, two. So that, that number is two right there. Okay, um, because, you know, this is going up two right here. This is going down two right here. Okay, uh, let's see. Find the value of B. Okay, well, this, this isn't done in degrees. Uh, it's done in 24-hour periods. Now, it takes 24 hours for, you know, one period. So what we need to do is translate that to degrees. So the, the way you do that is you just take 360 and you divide it by 24, and that equals 15. So that's going to be your number that goes in front of the T right here. And then we want to write down our value of C. Well, the value of C shouldn't be that difficult because uh, we've already gone through it here. Um, we've already found the principal axis. So, you know, the principal axis always, it, just a normal function starts at zero. Well, it went down to three, excuse me, negative three. So this is going to be negative three right there. So if you were to write this equation out, it doesn't ask you to do that, but it would be, you know, oh, well, they say F of T. I was going to say Y. So it would be F of T. Uh, equals 2 cosine um, 15t minus 3. That's the equation of it. Um, and, you know, that's, that's basically how you do it. Now, it says write down the interval of time during which the temperature is increasing from negative 4 Celsius to negative 2 Celsius. Well, let's look for negative 4 Celsius. Well, negative 4 right here, it's, the temperature is going down. We don't want that. We want it going up. So from negative 4 up to negative 2. Okay, so it's going, you know, uh, 16 to 20. Okay, so we don't really know if this is starting at midnight, or I would assume it starts at midnight, but it, it doesn't really matter. So we're just going to do T, and let's see, is increasing from negative 4. So... Um, T is going to be greater than or equal to, to 16, but less than or equal to 20. And, you know, you could also write it down like this if you want to in brackets. Uh, but I would write it down as an inequality like this. And they always ask one inequality, one like that. So th there you go. That's a cosine function that has, you know, amplitude. It has the period. It has... Um, you know, the vertical translation, and you had to actually look at the graph and see what was going on. So that's a pretty good problem. And now we'll do one with sine. Okay, this is a sine function, and uh, it says the graph of the function f of x equals a sine b of x plus c is shown below from negative 360 um, to 1080 degrees. Okay, so uh, what this is doing, um, this is in degrees, which is nice. It's a little different than the other one. So um, it shows you kind of both ways these problems work. All right, so what they want us to know, and this is a sine function, okay? So this, this is going to start, um, you know, uh, do I have a pen here? Let's see here. This is going to start right here, the sine function. Whoops. All right still pasting stuff so okay so it's going to start right here um so you know one whole period well it goes up and down and back up so okay this is kind of stretched out a little bit so instead of it being normally like 360 this period here is 720 so when they say write down the period they want you know the total length so that would be 720 degrees okay now, let's see. They, now, let's see. Write down the values of A, B, and C. Okay, cool. No problem. So, again, I'll do the same thing I did on the last one. Let's just look at the top of the function right here. Uh, the top, the maximum is going to be 5. And what's the minimum? Uh, the minimum is negative 1. Okay, so... What I want is the principal axis. Well, you know, I, I think you guys can see where it is, but, you know, let's do it anyway. 5 plus negative 1 is 4 divided by 2 is 2. So the principal axis is right here. Okay. Once I get that, and, I mean, you can see this on a graph. All you have to do is stick it in the middle. Um, and they, they usually give pretty nice graphs here. Now, what we want to do is look for the, the translation here. So let's look at this or excuse me, not, not the translation, the amplitude. Um, so let's look at that right there. 
Okay, well, how many spaces is that? One, two, three. Okay, so the amplitude is going to be three. Um, okay, now write down the value of B. Okay, well, B right here. Okay, well, let's see. What do we have to do here? Well, it, the period takes... Um, 720 degrees, so we can just do, you know, just like we did on the last problem, we just do, uh, where, let's see, where can I put this? Uh, running out of room, I'm running out of room. Uh, um, you can just do, you know, 360 divided by 720, which is one half, okay, so, or 0.5, but I would put one half. Eh, it doesn't even matter. Um, so that's going to be your B right there. So again, you just divide by 360. And then, what else? C. Okay, well, how much did it get translated? Well, the principal axis starts at 0, and it went up to 2. So this answer is going to be 2 right here. So if we were to write, they don't ask you to do this, but if, if we were to write this, uh, oh, it's f of x. Gosh, I always mess that up. Uh, f of x equals, it would be 3 sine 1 half x plus 2. And you are good to go. Okay, now, um, then, of course, they always, once you write the equation, they always ask you to analyze it a little bit, which we can certainly do here. Not a big deal. Okay, so it says P is one of the points where the Y equals F of X intersects the X axis. Okay, so we're looking for the X axis here. Uh, lies between negative 180 and 180. Okay, so uh, where it crosses the X axis between negative 180 and 180 is, is going to be right here. Okay, so it says mark and label the point P on the graph. Well, okay, no problem. Whoop, P, there you go. And then X, uh, uh, estimate the co X coordinate of P. Well, w what does this look like to you? I mean, you have 0 here, you have 180 here, so this cuts it in half. So I would say this is, you know, roughly negative uh, 90 degrees. Now, it's a little bit over maybe. Um, they give you all the way up to negative 80 on, on the mark scheme. So I would say negative 90 degrees. All right. Um, so that pretty much does it for that. So anyway, I hope this uh, video helped you out. And uh, we will leave on uh, one last note here um, because I'm a basketball coach. So I have to show this. This is rad. Okay. Uh, one second. Hold on. Okay. Check this out. This is the best free throw you'll ever see. Oh. Oh, man. That's not right. All right. Have a good day. Take it easy. Bye-bye.